Frédéric Debien from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. A few months ago, I had the chance to pay my first visit to the Oracle headquarters in California. Even though I already had a badge, I had to submit an access request for the various buildings where I was supposed to go for my work. Things work exactly the same way for mobile users in the Oracle Mobile Cloud service. They will not be allowed to access resources unless you explicitly grant them the right to. In this recording, you will learn about how to set up authorization on a variety of MCS resources. As a platform, MCS is always on the move. We keep adding new features to it and improving it. This is why I will not provide an exhaustive list of all the resources on which you can configure authorization. I will rather focus on two specific examples, storage collections and custom APIs. Before I do that, please note that access permissions to resources are granted to mobile user roles, not directly to mobile user accounts. This streamlines permission management since there are normally much more users than groups. Consequently, you have to ensure the appropriate roles have been defined before restricting access. Let's turn our attention to custom API endpoints first. The way we have implemented authorization for them allows you to be as coarse or as granular as you need. By default, no user or role can access an API for which user authentication is required. To define access permissions on an API, open it in the MCS API designer and click security. The roles field you will find at the top allows you to specify the roles that are granted access to it. Remember, those roles are defined in the realm associated to the mobile backend to which the API belongs. If you need to restrict access further, you can specify authorized roles besides each of the HTTP methods currently defined for the API. In other words, roles that have been granted API level access have access to all the methods, unless there is a further restriction on a specific method. This means you can restrict access at the endpoint level. In that case, the endpoint will be available only to the roles specified to it. I will now give you an example. Suppose I implemented an API that enables mobile users to submit and retrieve the results of ice hockey games in their area. The name of this API is Hockey Scores and it can be accessed at this URL. Mobile applications use GET to retrieve the scores and PUT to submit them. However, hockey scores are a precious resource. I need to protect their integrity. The consequence is that I grant API level access to the role users, but restrict access to the PUT method to the admin role only. That way, my precious hockey scores will be protected from those mischievous Australian hackers you probably heard of. Finally, please note that anonymous access to APIs is possible. This means mobile users do not have to provide a username or a password to access the API. Anonymous access should be enabled only if the data and transactions exposed are not considered sensitive by your organization. Permission management for collection is a bit different than it is for APIs. There are four different permissions you can apply to collections. But the meaning of those permissions changes depending, depending on the collection's isolation level. As a reminder, the objects stored in shared collections are stored together and can be accessed by all of the mobile users who can access the collection. On the other hand, isolated collections are divided in spaces belonging to each mobile user. The read permission will grant read-only access to all the objects in a shared collection. If the collection is isolated, then the mobile user can view the objects that belong to him, but not modify them. The read-write permission means that mobile users can override any object in a shared collection. In the context of an isolated collection, it means that a mobile user can override any object that exists in, in, in his own space inside the collection. It is not possible to access the isolated space of other users with that permission. The read all and read write all permissions apply to isolated collections only. 
Basically, they enable mobile users that have them to either access or override objects regardless of the isolated space they are stored in. Oracle's design philosophy for MCS can be summarized like this. Everything is secure by default. If you don't grant access to resources, then mobile users will not be able to use them. Only users belonging to authorized roles may access resources. This guarantees both the confidentiality and integrity of your data. There will be much more to say, but I'm out of time. So thank you for watching and see you soon.